Multicolored Mama. My sweet coffee skin holds secrets in its shade, whispers silent warnings to a black and white world. Do not box me in in your narrow racial jackets, too tight to move in, too thin to wear. My brown pores bleed with the sweat of many nations. Generations of colors ooze down my arm. My bantu behind plays the drums of dancing griots, telling stories with my sway, singing songs with each step. My high Choctaw cheekbones love the Mississippi Delta, remembers running Cloud's daughter and the red man gone. My breast angle round like the dark gypsy wenches. Crescent moons touch my belly, silver slithers on my throat. My almond eyes sparkle to the sound of eastern jingles. Glass chimes dress my eyelids. Tinkling bells kiss my brow. My dirty red hair speaks of crazy Cajun cousins, talks of fair Creole ladies and their dark Spanish men. My Tibetan thighs open and the Red Sea splits. My soft lips part between Dahomey and Brazil. My sweet coffee skin holds secrets in its shades, whispers silent warnings to a black and white world. I will not wear your narrow racial jackets as the blood of many nations runs sweetly through my veins. The sixth work. Rituals for the extended family. Following our rituals and exercises for attunement with your ancestors. By attunement, I mean sacred acts that will help you to realize your kinship with them. None of the exercises that follow are an invitation to possession. While direct possession is ultimately desirable, I feel it would be irresponsible to put such instructions in a book. Pouring libations. Libations should always be poured for the ancestors. Remember that the continuous creation of the Da is fluid. Water, juices, or alcohol can be used. Simply pour the liquid on the ground or floor of the altar three times and say, May my hands be fresh. May the road be clear. May the house be clean. After your ancestors have drank, each person should take a sip of the liquid. First feast. Your first feast for the ancestors should be as elaborate as your means allow. There's only one rule on cooking for the Igoons, no salt. Salt repels spirits and you are asking them to focus some attention on you. Coffee, bread, sweets, fruit, soup, stews, meats, and so on, they'll eat it all. It is good to cook a special something characteristic of their and your motherland, such as cornbread, challah bread, scones, tortillas. At this first feast, lay all the food on your altar and bless the food. Then take a small portion from each dish and place it on a saucer. Breathe on the food and touch it to the top of your head, your heart, and your pubis. Put a white candle in the center of the food, light it, and place it in a corner of the room. Then say, O blood of my blood, this is your child. Name yourself. All others, name themselves. I bring you, name the foods, for your nourishment. Know that you are loved and respected. Accept this offering for our good. Watch over your descendant. Let there be no death. Let there be no illness. Let there be no accident. Let there be no upheaval. Let there be no poverty. Let there be no ill fate. Name all attributes you want to dispel. Stand fast for me, for my good fortune, for my wealth, for my happiness, for my home, for my health. Name all attributes you want to attract. Thank you, blood of my blood. Thank you, almighty dead. The traditional Yoruba invocation is much longer than this, but we are talking to kind spirits who are appreciative of our attention, so you could begin with this humble invocation. Later, you will write your own. Attendance. You should have as many of your family members in attendance as possible. If they are far away or are hostile to your spiritual practice, have friends represent them. After the ritual, call your mother. You need not tell her what you were doing. Just call to say hi. After this feast, develop the habit of talking 
in taking a small saucer of food out of the pot before dinner is served. If you make this a weekly habit, the Igoons will be happy. Do you find yourself habitually dropping food while cooking? Do yams seem to fly from your fingers to slide across the kitchen floor? Maybe it's time to feed your ancestors. I have said that cooking for your ancestors is simple. It is with one exception. Do not think that you can impose your diet on them. It won't work for long. I knew a woman who tried to force her ancestors to keep a vegetarian diet. The oracle kept saying that they were not satisfied. I suggested she make some meatballs for them. She did and got great good fortune from the oracle. I could advise her this way because I tried to impose a pork-free diet on my ancestors, but much to my disgust, they insisted on pork chops to accompany their greens, yams, and cornbread. By now, a few of you are saying this is absurd. Why should I give food to somebody who can't eat it? Remember, everything, including food, is made of energy. You are simply returning energy to those who gave you the energy of existence. Feed them and they'll feed you. The day after your first feast, take the food on the saucer and place it at the foot of a tree or throw it into the compost heap. Give it back to earth and she will give it back to you in the form of fruit, flowers, and vegetables. Weekly feast. The prayer for the weekly feast can be very simple. Again, touch the food to the head, heart, and pubis before speaking. Use the list you made in the fifth work for known ancestors. Blessed be the name of who goes before me for unknown ancestors. Honor to all those who died by name the manner of death, love and respect. The extended family. I love the practice of extending the family to include people not related by blood. Extended family is how the runaway slaves made their way to freedom. It is the way humble people have always functioned. Today, the pressures of urban living, economic deprivation, and loneliness make the practice more than a courtesy. If we are to survive as a whole human beings, the extended family must become the norm. Any mentality that sets people apart from each other is the same mentality that gave rise to the slave trade, Nazi Germany, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the massacre of the Native American, the Salem witch hunts, and many other atrocities too numerous and heartbreaking to mention. Now this demon mentality is being extended to the entire planet through the nuclear weapons game. But through proper use of the Nomo, we can turn this ill fate around. We can affect the spirits of those who are possessed by the demon. We can activate the Da and debilitate the monster. We must make the whole of humanity our extended family. Here are two prayers to use or write your own prayers. Prayer for the living. To my kindred, name the persons and places where they live. May the blessing of the spirit be upon you. May you be your best self. May you walk in beauty. May your guides be with you at every crossroads. May you be honorably greeted when you arrive. Prayer for the yet unborn. Come reside with us, those who are born too. Name the attribute you wish to see birth, such as to stop the Holocaust, to end world hunger, to create beauty. We eagerly await you. Self-blessing. The ancestral bath. Choose an herb native to your mother. Mine is Mongolia. Steep it into a tea. Take a bath in the tea. While bathing, read the stories you wrote about your family. If you're finding it difficult to find herbs native to your motherland, try researching or go with whatever herbs you feel called to use at the time. Self-esteem chant. Choose a nicely scented oil. I like vanilla. Place a container of the oil on a plate. Melt the bottom of the two white candles and stick them on the plate on both sides of the oil. Recite the self-esteem chant over the oil. Now sit or stand before your agoon altar and make a small cross on your body with the oil. Say, I thank you for my name and anoint your body parts, which are mine by your grace. This exercise is important because women have been taught to be superficial of their bodies. 
If you are alienated from your body, this will help you to overcome the alienation. If you already like your body, you'll feel even better. Personally, I am grateful for my eyes, a gift from my father's family. Having mama's hips has its advantages, but my struggle is learning to love my hair, which has been the bane of my existence since childhood. Sweet silences. Your ancestor altar can be used as a meditation space. Following are two exercises for sweet silences. Water gazing. Sit in front of your altar and water gaze. The sacred kiss. Kneel in front of your altar. Open your hands so that the four fingers are close to each other and the thumbs are extended. Press the pointer finger and the thumbs of both hands against each other until they form a diamond or vulva womb. Hold the vulva womb directly over the top of your head. Inhale. Place the vulva womb on the floor, earth. Exhale. Kiss the sacred portal that brought you into the world. Joyful noises. Make or buy a percussion instrument. Drum, rattle, tambourine, cowbell, calves, bottle, or a spoon. Sit and stand before your altar. Tap out a rhythm that feels ancient and natural to you. Create a rhythm by clapping your hands and stamping your feet. Play with the sound of the letter O. Chant your grandmother's name repeatedly. Change the sound at times. Let the chant crescendo and then softer. Walk Dumbala in front of your altar. Make hissing and rattling sounds. Please be aware that all these exercises can be done in a wheelchair. Kiss the vulva wound from an upright position by simply placing it in front of your lips. Do Dumbala by pushing the chest forward. Down, back, and up. It may seem to you that some of these exercises are theater games. It is true that She Who Whispers has advised me to make them simple and attractive. But there are more than psychological devices to make you feel good. They are expenditures of energy consciously directed towards your ancestors. As you perform them, be aware that your subconscious is working in the assembly line to the racial consciousness and the collective unconscious. Be mindful of the inspiration that comes during and after these exercises. The mother tongue. Ancestors communicate with us in at least three ways. First, by possession. Second, by means of an oracle. And third, through dreams. Possession. There are traditional ways to invite the intelligence of our ancestors to come reside in our bodies. As I said before, this is not our aim. Instead of possession, let us entertain the notion of divine companionship. We can say that certain modes of being, such as laughter, courage, holiness, exist as spirits within or without our conscious and bodies. We, by our chosen actions and attitudes, Say to the spirit of holiness, come be with me. She, holiness, comes and stays with us for as long as our action and attitudes warrant her presence. Thus, while being or acting in the role of priestess, you too are a holy person because you have invoked for and allowed holiness to reside in you. When the work associated with the role ceases, the ritual ends, you are then simply another person, a child of the mother the most holy. Think of attunement with your ancestors in this way, and you will not be burdened with the media-induced fear of possession. The oracle. The oracle traditionally used to communicate with the ancestors is a set of four pieces of fresh coconut. The process for using this oracle is very detailed. A folktale or proverb corresponds to each combination thrown. The invocation to open the mouth of the oracle is done in an esoteric language. And certain combinations call for rituals which take days to perform and require the aid of a priestess initiated into the secrets of the tradition. This process is too complex to teach in this book. Instead, I recommend that you water gaze with your ancestors. Ask them a specific question. Be quiet and listen for an answer. Trust your intuition and record the image that appears in your gazing bowl and test its relevance to your affairs. Or you may use an oracle you're familiar with. The I Ching, 
tarot cards, or a thought dial. The I Ching is a Chinese system of divining by casting coins. A thought dial is an instrument created by Sidney Omar used to arrive a total of numbers which correspond to subconscious thought. Simply ask your ancestors to kindly speak to you through them. The cooperate. These oracles work because your subconscious mind causes your psychokinetic power through the coins. Shuffle the cards or spin the dial in a pattern and sequence that will give you an applicable answer. Be humble. Listen carefully. Look with clear eyes. And remain open to possibilities. I know your question. What if I call Big Mama or some other ancestor and she doesn't answer? I cannot answer that question with absolute authority, but consider this. Maybe she has already reincarnated and is not home. Maybe she's at work on another assignment with another kindred spirit. Also, sometimes we attract the attention of affinity spirits. These are the spirits of people with personalities, problems, and aspirations similar to yours. They seek relationship with incarnate kin who can help them with their work on the other side of the veil. Several of my Igoons are friends of my mother's who have passed over. Do you have a Hera for whose lifestyle and courage you feel a strong affinity? A Hera. Feminists reject the word hero. A Hera is a woman who exhibits great courage for the true nature of the goddess Hera. See Lost Goddesses of Ancient Greece by Charlene Spretnik. If you do have an Hera whose lifestyle and courage you feel a strong affinity for, then why not place her image on your altar? For a while, Sojourner Truth was my affinity spirit. For two years, I performed dramatic renderings of her ain't I a woman speech. People always commented that they really felt her presence during my performance. This is an example of Igun companionship. I never wore an authentic costume and I cannot imitate her Eastern dialect. At the end of two years, her poster fell from my wall. I stopped delivering her speech. It is important to know when to let go. Dreams. Our dreams are the most accessible way to communicate with the ancestors. Through our dreams, we can create a secret language. You and your ancestors set, establish symbol systems and agree on their meaning. The relationship becomes one of call and response. For example, dreams can be an alarm system. As implied in the poem, Friends, I used to be very naive. I thought that if I was just courteous and supportive of other people, they would automatically follow the golden rule. I had a friend whom I treated like a sister, but after years of the relationship, I experienced a betrayal at her hands that could have cost me my life. I was deeply injured by this. It made me sus a suspicious bitch who assumed the worst first. Her name became so despicable to me that I automatically distrusted anybody from her country, anybody of her zodiac sign, and anybody whose name started with the same letter as hers. This, of course, was absurd and uncomfortable. I wanted to be free of this weight, so my ancestors renamed her an animal name and gave her a sound rather than a voice with which to lie. Now, whenever I am falsely trusting someone, she appears to me in a dream, smiling and making this animal sound. Now I don't have to be uptight all the time. I just have to be careful when she shows up. My warriors are on their job. To clarify your dreams, keep a bowl of water under or near your bed. If you are having nightmares, add a piece of camphor or a little bay rum to the water. To keep the dreams sweet, add a nice oil or perfume. Change the water weekly. Some elders say that a bit of valerian root in the pillow will ensure a sound sleep. I have lived in at least one family that practiced routine dream telling. In this practice, no one is allowed to speak before saying good morning to the ancestors. Some people simply got up in the morning and breathed on their shrine. Then we gathered around the breakfast table. If a dream was bad news, it was told before eating. 
If good news, it was told after consuming food. If you decide to employ this practice, you will discover through extended family members. Dreams tend to be cross dreamt or cross dreams to dream individual chapters of the continuing story. My ultra sister, Lorenda Moonstar, says that in Native American culture, dreaming and dying are closely linked. She strongly encourages deciding how and when you will go to sleep. Her belief is that people who consciously control their sleep patterns can make the transition from life to death as easily as going to sleep. Pleasant dreams.